Good morning, I'm Victor Vakale, and I'm a medical student from the University of Minnesota. I want to thank the Society for accepting our work. So I'll be presenting a comparison of intraoperative ERCP versus laparoscopic common bile duct exploration for the management of cholelithiasis. Currently, there exists significant variation in the surgical management of patients with cholelithiasis. Broadly, there are two different approaches that are employed, a single-stage technique and a two-stage technique. The single-stage techniques include an intraoperative ERCP with a lap coli or a laparoscopic common bile duct exploration with a lap coli, which in turn can be performed using a transcholidocal or a transcystic approach. The two-stage techniques include a preoperative ERCP or a postoperative ERCP with a lap coli. Currently, various national guidelines, including those established by SAGES, the American Gastrointestinal and Endosc the American Gastrointestinal Endoscopy Society and the British Society for Gastroenterology and the NICE guidelines all state that despite having multiple randomized clinical trials, evaluating various techniques, there's insufficient evidence to establish what the best approach is. Recent clinical studies and meta-analysis suggest that the single-stage technique that's the laparoscopic common bile duct exploration and the intraoperative ERCP are safer, more efficacious, and associated with shorter, shorter hospital length of stay. Recently, we published our institutional experience comp comparing the single-staged intraoperative ERCP technique to the two-staged postoperative ERCP technique, and we also found that the single-stage technique was superior. However, despite current evidence, when a direct comparison between the two single-stage techniques were attempted, there remains even less consensus. Very few trials have directly compared LCBDE to intraoperative ERCP, and the ones that have oh, sure. Very few trials have directly compared the safety and efficacy of LCBDE to intraoperative ERCP, and the ones that did were limited to single center studies that report equivalent outcomes. So in our study, we compared the single stage techniques, that is IRCP, to laparoscopic common bile duct exploration. We performed a 13-year retrospective cohort study using the American College of Surgeons NISQIP database. Using ICD-9 and 10 codes, along with CPT codes, we included all adult patients who underwent a laparoscopic cholecystectomy with a concurrent intraoperative ERCP or a laparoscopic common bile duct expiration. We subsequently excluded any patient who underwent any concurrent operative procedure. After we identified this group, in accordance with the American Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, and the British Society of Gastroenterology guidelines to increase the pretest probability of having common bile duct stones, we included only those patients that had at least one of the following clinical criteria. We were then left with two cohorts, which included only those patients, which included around 600 patients in the intraoperative ERCP group and around 1,200 patients in the laparoscopic common bile duct group. Our outcomes of interest were perioperative outcomes and 30-day postoperative morbidity and mortality. Using univariate techniques, we evaluated over 30 demographic variables and clinical variables, including comorbidities, and found that there were no differences in baseline between both groups. Similarly, we found no differences in preoperative labs and baseline rates of sepsis. Baseline liver function tests were highly suggestive of a biliary obstruction. Baseline wound infection classes and ASA scores were also similar between both groups, suggesting homogeneity of our baseline populations. The intraoperative ERCP group had a slightly lower operative time. However, the length of hospital stay was similar between both these groups. To further evaluate operative time, we stratified intraoperative ERCP into those performed primarily by the surgical team. We call this PERCP, and those secondarily performed by a team of endoscopists, and we call that SERCP. We then compared all three groups and found that ERCPs performed by the primary surgical team resulted in lower operative times as compared to the, either of the other two groups. In terms of postoperative infectious morbidity, we found no differences between both groups, 
Outcomes evaluated include, included rates of superficial surgical site infections, organ space infections, wound dehiscence, pneumonias, UTIs, sepsis, and rates of septic shock. Similarly, there was no difference in non-infectious morbidity, including rates of prolonged ventilation, acute renal failure, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thromboses, and myocardial infarctions, among many others. Importantly, we found no difference, differences in 30-day rates of reoperation, readmission, and mortality between both these groups. Furthermore, we aggregated and compared all postoperative complications using the validated clavian dindo grading scale, which showed no differences between groups, further validating the similar efficacy and safety profile of both these procedures. So in our analysis, we found that there was no difference in postoperative morbidity or mortality between intraoperative ERCP and laparoscopic common bile duct expiration. Intraoperative ERCP had sh shorter operative time, possibly exposing patients to less anesthesia and its associated risks. However, overall length of stay was similar between both cohorts. The 30-day reoperation and readmission rates were also similar between both these groups. And this endpoint may serve as a surrogate marker for overall procedural efficacy and for complications that we were unable to explicitly study in our, in our paper, which include rates for biliary leakage, bile duct injury, rates for postoperative pancreatitis, cholangitis, which would all require some form of medical or surgical reintervention. We acknowledge the limitations of our study, most of which are inherent to an ESCOP analysis. These include errors in coding, the presence of unmeasured covariates, and the lack of data and clinical presentation. Additionally, we were unable to assess baseline risk of stones and the rates of conversion to an open procedure. Other outcomes that we were unable to collect were clearance rates, rates of biliary leaks, postoperative pancreatitis, cholangitis, as mentioned earlier. Additionally, we also did, were unable to collect long-term complications as subsequent risk of stones and rates of hernias. So in conclusion, intraoperative ERCP and laparoscopic common bile duct exploration result in low postoperative morbidity and mortality. Institutions with easy access to endoscopists may favor intra intraoperative ERCP due to its decreased operative time and less risks associated with anesthesia. However, laparoscopic common bile duct exploration remains a reliable and efficacious option in facilities lacking endoscopic expertise, especially in a rural or in developing nations. A recent study noted that over the past two decades, the rates of common bile duct expiration fell over 30%, and today th less than 3% of patients with choidocolithiasis are being managed laparoscopically in the United States. We believe that surgical training is paramount to achieving overall success, and recently some training institutions, including ours, have instituted a simulation-based mastery model uh, to teach residents on how to use the laparoscopic common bile duct expiration technique. Such efforts help surgeons to safely, safely and efficiently manage cholidocolithiasis using LCBDE, and the lack of such training may make it difficult to reverse the declining trend on using BDE, bile duct expiration in general, and surgeons may ultimately lose the ability to surgically manage cholidocolithiasis. Thank you very much for your attention, and happy to take any questions.